Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man we had back on the show back in May of 2021, and he is coming off a victory here at GC MMA number 17. Josh, man, I appreciate time. Oh, you're kind of joking uh, right before we got started here. Uh, May 2021 seems like such a long time ago. Like in your world, like does it only feel like like a year and a half ago? Man, it feels like such a long time ago. Should be in a textbook or something. You know what I mean? It's, it's not that long ago. It feels like, but uh, I'm glad to be back. Like, like you think about like where you were back in May of 2021 as, as a martial artist and where you're at now. Like, what, what's the biggest difference? Uh, uh, I was undefeated as a professional back then, but you know, things changed. Since then, uh, I actually ended up taking a loss, but, you know, I've gained uh, a lot of experience as a, just a martial artist and just as an athlete, just a lot more mature about everything I do. It w- Was it that loss that was kind of a, a, a turning point for you? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it was like a turning point for me, but it definitely uh, taught me some things. You know, like fighters always talk about that. They, they talk about like, you know, you want these learning lessons and wins. You, you don't want these learning lessons when things don't go your way. I mean, like, is it one of those things of it was more of like, okay, you know, here, here's what, here's the adjustments I need to make more than anything else. Uh, yeah. So it was adjustments. It was mostly, I, I feel like it was mostly like just a mental thing. Uh, I just knew like how it needs to become it. It taught me how to be better mentally and then uh, how I should prepare a little bit better rather than like, I don't, it wasn't a skill issue. It was more of like a mental issue. I feel like uh, in that fight I lost uh, last year. And you know, you hear athletes, no matter what we're talking about, mixed martial arts, baseball, basketball, football, hockey, whatever it may be. And they'll talk about how sports is so, so mental. Like, you know, and, and fighters yeah. have talked about this. They'll be like, you know, and if your head's just not in the right space, it goes, you could be the greatest fighter is you're, you're just not putting yourself in a great situation. Like how much of this game is mental versus physical for you? Man, I would say, uh, it's, it's like 95% mental. Like it's only okay. 5% of it for me. It's just like physical. That's the easy part. Just going to the gym, getting the reps in you know, doing what you're supposed to do as an athlete, but like the mental training and like how you have to train yourself and think and uh, just mold your mind when you're going into a fight or going into a a competition for anything. It could be uh, me doing like a Fortnite tournament or something, you know, or some, some, or playing certain destroy my friends, like being competitive. It's just a whole different mindset. You know, I can see the setup behind you, and I was kind of thinking, like, is that the video game gaming setup for you? Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, it's a school school work's going on right now, but that's where I game at mostly. See, see, I see you're like me. I can't be a one monitor setup guy. I got to have multiple nah, monitors. Never. never that. You got to have the open window. Look up the answers on one window. <laughs> you, you're doing the, the work on the other window. You know. <laughs> like literally here in my home office, I have two pretty large screens attached to one computer. Then I've got a, a my MacBook Pro attached to my iPad. So I've got plenty of screens here in the office. Facts. I have like a laptop somewhere around here too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've I've done that situation like you're on the road. You just have like that one single laptop screen. You're like, man, this is just, this is weird. It's not it. When you open it, I'm just, I'll be at school, just open my laptop. I'm just like, bro, like, I, I need another one. So what do you go to school for? I'm the side or something. Man, I want to, uh, I'm seeking a degree in accounting eventually. Okay. But, you know, starting off slow with some basic classes. It, it, was there something that drew you to accounting? Uh, it's just, um, I've, I've never been bad at math. And, like, I, I couldn't see myself doing anything like science where, like, there's so much unknown or, uh, like, history or anything like that. And accounting is pretty cut and dry, and you can get a job in accounting pretty much anywhere in the world. So mm-hmm. it's a really versatile degree. So, And, and of course, mention about you coming off this win. Uh, like, as you, uh, as you think about the fight, how do you evaluate your performance? Uh... I think it was a good performance. Uh, a lot of people uh, will judge me and criticize me like for having like boring fights or 
not being the most exciting, but that's where I, I don't um, tailor to people. I don't really listen to the critics when it comes to that. I just uh, go out there and I do my job. And if you want to see a fight, give me somebody good enough to bring the dog out of me and force me to fight. So uh, it takes two to dance. So bring me a dog if you want me to fucking fight. Yeah, you, um, when, they, they talk about that blocking out the noise. Has that always been kind of an easy thing for you to do? No, uh, just the more and more I grow up, the more and more I mature, I just start to not give a shit. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I just be like, bro, I'm just, I got my fight money. I got my show money. I got my win money. I could give a fuck. Uh, I got this W on my record. And that's pretty much what it is. You know, because like, fighters will talk, about, they'll talk about it. It's a balancing act because yes, it's a sport. Yes, it's entertainment, but the, at the end of the day, you got to go out there and do what you got. You got to put yourself in the best position to succeed. Like, is there kind of like that thin line for you where you're like, you know what? I'm only going to cross that line if I, I truly feel that, you know, like you mentioned about you're a numbers guy. Like, do you almost look at a way of saying, OK, the percentages are my way to take this risk? Yeah, I was I was like, uh, assess that. I'm just like, look. I have uh, my win loss ratio versus my opponents versus what he does in the cage versus this. And I'm just like, chances are I'm going to win this fight because like uh, statistically speaking, I'm successful in these situations and this person is not. So that's why I'll look at that. And then obviously I'll you look at the film and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But also just self-belief is a big part of it. Just fucking believe in yourself. You know, you mentioned about, you know, let there be an opponent to bring the dog out of you. Yeah. Okay. Is there somebody inside your gym that knows how to bring that dog out in you? But uh, there, there's so many of them. There's so many good kids in the, in the gym. Not kids, but grown men. But, like, uh, there's Camden Fondo. Um, he's, a, he's another, he's a badass wrestler. I can't take him down and lay on him. <laughs> So I have to you forcing me to fight. Same with uh, guys like Kyle Todrink and uh, Kieran Reed for sure. He's uh he's been around for a long time and he's always been able to bring some dog out of me. I have so many good teammates. I don't want to miss anybody, but there's uh there's a lot of good guys around me that I, I have to fight. Rain Guerrero, like my main training partner for like my last camp, mm-hmm. flyweight girl, flyweight woman, really pushes me harder than ninety percent of my mm-hmm. opponents that I've had out there. Is so it I, is it just because she just kind of knows how to push you I- in the right way? Nah, she's just an animal. <laughs> <laughs> like straight up. Your management with nothing but animals. Your management they're they're telling me some things about you. And uh the last line they said to me really stuck out to me. It says, If I was taller, I'd be a different sport. Oh yeah, for sure. I'd be like if I was like six three, I'd probably be playing basketball. Okay. I don't know. Or if I be basketball, football. Um, yeah, yeah, be doing something where I can make more money. Were you big in basketball and football growing up as a kid? Was that kind of the go to sports for you? Nah, like I was smart enough to realize like I'm short and this is this shit is not gonna work out. <laughs> Like, so stuck to wrestling that other shit. In, in terms of uh, what's you know what's kind of the the game plan in, in terms of this mixed martial arts journey of of getting back inside competition. Uh, I don't really have a game plan right now, but uh, one thing I will tell you is that I'm moving down to flyweight, and that's it. You know, I take a take it one step at a time i don't look too far into the future about things but i know at the end of the day i will be a world champion and i will be a household name that's the only two things i can guarantee you between now and then i can't really say much i'm just taking it one fight at a at a time the move to flyweight was that a, a, a something that you and your, your team have been talking about for some time maybe for a little bit uh i used to be kind of a bigger bantamweight or just like a regular size better weight, but over the over time, getting like my nutrition better and uh, just living a better lifestyle, I'm a little bit smaller. I'm I'm kind of 
undersized at Bantamweight right now. Like I, my weight cuts are just mm-hmm. not really weight cuts. They're super easy. I can inconvenience my diet for like a week, and I'm there. And, of course, look forward to seeing when the next fight's going to take place, man. Josh, uh, appreciate the time. Appreciate you coming on the show. Of course, uh, let me know anything you can find on social media. And uh, anything else you want to mention, man? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Josh Snow MMA. That's pretty much my only form of real, like, social media. I do have a Twitter, but it's I don't I can't even name it. It's just so much bullshit on there. I just want to say shout-out to my coaches and shout-out to, uh, shout to my coaches, uh, Jerry Mahon, Richard Richard Cole Copley, um, Joel Rivera at Texas Strike Academy, and just all my training partners and teammates that uh, helped me and pushed me to be the martial artist I am.